In this video, I am going to explain the design of the square root amplifier and the figure drawn here is a square root amplifier. Let's analyze this step by step of how we are getting the amplification of the square root signal that we are providing at the input. So this is the circuit diagram. So we don't know whether this transistor is on or off this portion. So initially, let us assume that there is no feedback. No feedback. Now, if you assume that no feedback, you should break this part. Now, this is a simple comparator where the positive terminal or the non-inverting terminal is connected to the ground and there was an input signal given at the inverting terminal of the op amp. Let us assume that op amp is also an idle one. Now, the diagram will be so simple that it will look like this. The positive terminal is grounded and the negative terminal is given with an input signal V in and this is V out. Now, if you look here, since there is no current that is flowing into the terminal of the op amp, so you, you, will, you are going to see the entire input signal across this point. Now, this is nothing but a simple zero level detector you can call. Now, you will get V out greater than zero when V in is negative. And if Vin is, see, this is possible when Vin equal to negative and V out less than zero when Vin equal to positive. These are the first set of conclusion statements that one should make a note. So these are very important. Now, let us move ahead. Sorry for this. Okay. Now let us move ahead and think here, the gate terminal of this MOSFET is connected to ground. Now for this MOSFET to turn on, there will be a diode like this. So this potential should be negative. So for this transistor to be on, for transistor to be in the on state, output should be negative. So now let's get back to these two statements. So V output will be negative when V in is positive. So the mandate condition is input that you are applying should be positive. So this is the first conclusion that we can draw to satisfy or to design a square root amplifier. So after designing, if once this transistor is on, so let us assume now V out is also negative. Now, when, now once this transistor is on, then there is a negative feedback possible negative feedback possible. If negative feedback is possible, then we can apply the concept of virtual shot. So this point will also be grounded. Now, if you look here, the drain terminal is also grounded and the gate terminal is also grounded. Now the transistor will look somewhat like this. Here it is negative source terminal is of negative potential, which indicates that this is in saturation region. Now, once when the transistor is in saturation region, the current equation that you can use equal to a saturation current equation that is drain current equal to half mu and C ox W by L into VGS minus VTH whole square. For ease, let me consider this entire thing as some constant K, which is equal to half K VGS minus VTH whole square. So this is the current equation that you can use here. Now the current that is entering through this transistor is equal to the current that is passing through this resistor, which is nothing but V in minus zero by R. So how, now I can equate this with V in by R. So now, now if you get the equation for VGS, VGS minus VTH whole square, let me scroll down. I want some more space. VGS minus VTH whole square equal to two times of V in by K into R. Now, if you eliminate this square, you will get a root here with plus or minus sign. Now, my VGS equal to plus or minus root over two V in by K into R plus VTH. Now, this is one equation that you should take care of. Now, let's get back to this diagram. One more important observation that one should make is, let me change the color to red. Okay. See, now here the transistor is there like this and the gate terminal is grounded and the source terminal is some Vs let us take or V out. This is V out right now. 
for this transistor to on for any transistor to on for an mos vgs should be greater than or equal to vth vgs can be written as vg minus vs greater than vth vg is already grounded 0 volts which means minus vs is greater than vth or vs is less than minus vth this is one more important statement that one should get through where vs is nothing but v out so v out should be less than minus vth now you have to verify this condition let's get back to this equation now the possibilities for this vgs is nothing but vg minus vs which means 0 volts minus vs which is nothing but minus vs which is nothing but minus v out because the source potential is nothing but your output voltage now here i can write the two possibility equations are plus root over 2v in by k into r plus vth and the other possibility is minus root over 2v in by k into r plus vth now here itself i will modify so the left hand side part is minus v out minus v out let me use one more color so it will be clear for you let me use black this time okay now if you multiply with minus this will cancel here you will get minus and here also you will get minus in the same way this is case 1 and this is case 2 in the case 2 also you eliminate this minus you will get plus here you will get minus here now v, your v out should be less than minus vth which means it should be less than minus vth less than minus vth you cancel out this minus vth on both sides now you see here from this case one it is if you multiply again with minus you will get 2 v in by k into r should be greater than 0 but here root 2 v in by k into r is less than 0 now you again get back to this case for your v out to be less than 0 which is where we started our entire analysis to turn on this mosfet your input should be positive or greater than 0 which is not happening in this second case so this is wrong this is correct so your final answer should be v out equal to v out equal to minus root over 2 v in by k into r minus vth see i after this process after eliminating this minus this is what you will get the equation in case one right so this is your uh, see here output is proportional to the square root of input that's why it's called as square root of square root amplifier and also you are giving input at the negative terminal so you are getting a negative sign in the output so these all statements are uh, convincing and concluding so we can say that the square root amplifier all many students including me were doing mistake in one case let me also explain that the drain current equal to half mu n c ox w by l into vgs minus vth whole square which is equal to v in by r this up to this everyone will come across now here we we can split into two cases if vgs is directly minus v out if you substitute here then you will get id equal to half into let us assume this as k and this is v out plus vth whole square because you can take minus common and as this is under square nothing to write all these things so here v out plus vth whole square equal to 2 v in by k into r you send the square root this side and this plus vth this side so this is one equation possible instead of substituting here itself you first write the equation for vgs then you will get vgs equal to 2 v in by k into r under root plus vth you will get now you substitute vgs equal to minus v out so you will get for v out another set of equation that is 2 v in by k into r minus vth but these two are not similar the analysis is wrong that's why i explained in detail how to approach and how to get to a final conclusion that which equation is correct and the answer is 
this is correct so this is your final answer v out equal to minus root over 2v in by r into k minus vth so this is your equation for the square root amplifier and this is your design for the square root amplifier hope you guys learned something new in this video if you like this video please click on the like option and share to your friends if you want them to learn more about this square root amplifier thank you for watching see you in the next video